I don't want to interrupt you, no, no, sorry. Start my time from three minutes. Right, so guys, we've got him banged to rights now. Banged to rights, this guy is blown out of the park. Why? I'll tell you why. Because he said he wanted to hear from words, the words of Jesus. This is Jesus speaking. After the resurrection, he says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead on the third day. Jesus said it himself post the resurrection in Luke chapter 24. Now he wants to change the framework of our discussion. I am not interested. If he wanted to discuss the reliability of the gospels, he should have said that at the beginning. What he said he wanted to talk about was what must a person do to be saved. And I can therefore appeal to my authorities. I don't have to justify my authorities because he said, what in Christianity must a person do to be saved? I don't have to justify them to make my argument. I just have to show that they're there. If he wants to debate reliability, he should have said that at the beginning, not change the subject because he's losing. Now notice, the whole time I have just been absorbing his criticism about what a person must do to be saved from Christianity. I haven't yet even begun to criticize Islam. So what I'm going to do now, because he's, he's not dealing with the verses, I want him to, I'll come back to Isaiah 53, and I want, now that we've got it from Jesus' own lips that the Christ must suffer and die, I want him to address why the prophets teach what the prophets actually teach about that suffering and dying. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open. Sorry, let me come back up here. Surely, can I read this whole passage? Can we pause? Am I alright to pause with your consent? So this is what the prophets say about the suffering Messiah. They say this. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and like one whom men hide their face. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray, each of us turning away, turning his own way, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. So Jesus says, the Christ must suffer and die on the third day and the prophets say the Christ must suffer for the iniquities of the world. Do you now agree that Christ teaches that he must die and suffer for the iniquities of the world? And if not, show me biblically why not. Um, okay, fair enough. So, would you agree? No, I don't. Um, well, because, well, no, 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 no. I'll explain why I don't agree. Okay, from the Bible. Yeah. Um, you, you're quoting the Old Testament. I, I can just go to my Jewish cousins and they will tell you your follow. Okay? So, yeah, literally. Because this verse is, I mean, as far as I recall, within Jewish theology, it's talking about how when the Jews were kicked out of uh, Egypt or wherever it was. Look, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not involved with us, I'm, I'm, I'm Judaism. But, but the point being is, they're basically committed some sins and it's talking about how, how this is like a metaphorical representation of an individual that will um, come after, um, that will basically in enable the, their repentance for that specific sin. So no Jew believes that some, some Messiah will come that will cleanse all of their, you know, all of their sins and this idea of, um, of, of inheriting seminally the sin of Adam. Which is, which is why you get baptized and, and all these things, right? No Jew believes in that. So your interpretation, that's, that's fair. You can, you can believe in your fairy tale. But, but Jews will disagree with you, okay? Because, and, and, and it's in fact their scripture. So quoting the Isaiah is not going to help you. They don't believe in, in what you believe in. 
So like, it's just ridiculous. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm making a very, very simple and straightforward thing, which is that you guys believe in Jesus. You're called Christians, Christians, right? So show me from the teaching of Jesus, and you fail to do that. Right, and, and and even that part where where where, where basically Jesus in, in the Gospel of Luke uh, says that I that I will die and rise on the third day. Okay, that's that that is an incident that happens in the Bible. Jesus also caused Pharisees, as I mentioned before, all sorts of things. Do I have to believe that Jesus said X Y Z to the Pharisees to basically be redeemed? No, that incident is very very particular. So therefore, Jesus should also highlight that this incident is very particular by saying that guys, I'm going to die for your sins. You have to believe in that to be saved. Why the hell do I have to rely on, on someone else for that? That doesn't make any sense. And, and also this idea of, of uh, verifying Paul. No, Luke, the, who also wrote Acts and whatever, was, was uh, Luke an, an eyewitness? That was my, I mean, to, to basically specify my claim. Bring me multiple eyewitnesses that said that Paul saw Jesus. It's just Paul himself that, that claims that. It's just Paul himself that claims that. Okay? So, um, so Paul is, you know, he means nothing, he's just a, so I see the liar, do you guys, do you guys believe that he's a big man? God bless you, thank you very much. Ten, uh, 30 I'm, seconds I'm, I'm left. Okay, so did you all hear him say, oh, the Jews won't believe that? Well, I'm just pointing out that the Jews don't believe that Muhammad's in the Bible either. But do Muslims accept no, no the test? Don't interrupt, sorry, I didn't interrupt sorry, you. Sorry, sorry. No, right, so... So when, when the Jews don't accept Christian teaching, they're an authority. When Jews don't accept Muslim teaching, suddenly they don't know what they're talking about. Muslims try to show Muhammad in the Bible all the time. Jews don't accept that, but the Jews are wrong. Let's just be clear about something. The New Testament from beginning to end is a Jewish document. It was written and authored by Jews. Matthew was a Jew, John was a Jew, Luke was a disciple of Jew, Mark was a disciple of Jews, Paul was a Jew. They were all Jews. And furthermore, appealing to the Jews of today is essentially appealing to the Jews of the fifth century. They're Talmudic Jews. The Judaism that emerged after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD is the rabbinic Judaism of the Pharisees. But as evidenced by the New Testament, the Pharisees were just one group amongst many groups. The Herodians, the Sadducees, the Christians. Were the, original, the first Christians were all Jews. So this was an internal discussion within Judaism. And I'm going to demonstrate how ignorant he is about Second Temple Judaism. Because in Second Temple Judaism, they have literature talking about the Son of Man as being a divine figure. Now, I can't remember. I, well, I want to say, I want to say Melchizedek. No, it's not Melchizedek. What is it? The one that's quoted in uh, the letters of Paul, but it's not in scripture. Oh. Enoch. Enoch. Enoch, thank you. I think it's in Enoch. In Enoch, it talks about the Son of Man being a divine figure. That's Second Temple Jewish literature from the first century that isn't Christian, that says that the Son of Man is divine, showing that Jews in the first century, there were Jews in the first century who believed that the Son of Man was divine. He's appealing to 5th century Jews that reject the idea of Muhammad being a prophet. Now, the fact of the matter is, in Isaiah 53, Peter, who was a Jew, who, who was behind the writing of the Gospel of Mark, Mark quotes the book of Isaiah and the prophecies in Isaiah to make the case from chapters 18 to 15 that Jesus Christ is the suffering servant. He just does not know the literature he's trying to argue with. And he doesn't know the history in which it was born either. Right, so when I, when I was referring to the Jews, I was just saying that, there's, that there are nuances within your own understanding of the actual uh, Old Testament. So your interpretation isn't some kind of, you know, on a pedestal. You're just one out of the, you know, a bunch of uh, whatever, you want to call them, right? Yeah, I mean, who are you guys? <laughs> there, are, there are basically a bunch of interpretations involved. Why is your, why is your understanding superior to the ones of, of the fifth century Jews? By the way, as, as Muslims, we believe that yes, it was very early on that, Jew, that Jesus was deified. 
<laughs> we don't dispute that. There's not there's not some kind of oh gotcha kind of thing, right? It's, uh, it's just he, I mean, the, the funny thing is that you're mentioning things that I generally don't don't, don't like dispute. Like I, I don't have an issue with with you know the second temple, the Jews understanding whatever. They are kafar. They are disbelievers in, in our view. Sure, they had that view of a, of, a, of a human being being deified. So what? There are people who believe that you know uh, Tupac is still alive today. I don't care, man. Like, like who, who are these individuals that, that have um, beliefs? You know, they, they can, anyone anyone can bring any beliefs. I'm, I'm saying we need to go back to the roots, right? This is actually what the Quran also does a lot. You know, how can Ibrahim was um, al Nasara were Abraham and his two sons? Uh, Isaac and Ishmael. Did they ever call themselves Christians? Did they ever call themselves Jews? They, they, they always refer to themselves as individuals who submitted to God. So, 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 so this is the kind of mentality I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have people refer back to. We, we want to go back to the original source, Jesus, right? Thank you. So, does Jesus actually support your beliefs? Okay, in your Gospels, you have you have him, for example, pro prophesizing that he will die and and, and the. Um, um, Raised uh, and, and be raised on oh my god and be raised on the third day. I'm, I'm, I'm like I I lag quite a lot when I talk. It's a bit annoying. But anyways, the, the point being is that he did prophesize that in the gospels. Fine, let's just accept that. But it doesn't help you because there are lots of incidents in the Bible which are not necessary for an, indiv for an individual to believe in to to reach uh, you know uh, paradise. So so as as example of the Pharisees where he cursed the trees. Do I have to believe that Jesus cursed the tree to 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 reach paradise? No, no, I don't. <laughs> There are lots of incidents in the Bible. So what makes this incident? Uh, yeah. What? So what makes this incident so, so specific? And you can't use the Old Testament because there are, because there are multiple interpretations. What makes your interpretation um, the, the the true one? Again, because you'll find other people who, who don't agree with you. And even within the New Testament, you don't find anything specific where Jesus points towards a certain list of beliefs. Sorry, a certain list of beliefs that an individual must uh, adhere to to attain paradise. 15. I'm done. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'll show you yet more proof. And I'm just wondering at, how, at what point the penny will drop that his argument is busted. Listen to Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, reading from verse 27. He said he wants it explicit. I don't think we can have any more explicit than this. Jesus speaking, he says, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It says it, Jesus says it, bro. Now will you accept that you are wrong? that Jesus does say that his death is for salvation, that his blood of the new covenant is for salvation. And what else does Jesus say? Can you just say on that uh, what else does Jesus say? Jesus says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. All, all of it. All of it. Jesus. What human being can say that? None. Can Muhammad say that? No. Can any of you say that? No. Can he say that? No. Can I say that? Never. Jesus said it. Amen. Then he goes on to say, Go therefore and make all disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. So Jesus is saying, Teach people to believe that my blood is shed for the forgiveness of sins. He said, go and make disciples, teaching them to observe what I have commanded you. He commanded us to break bread and to share the cup of wine in remembrance that his blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God. And the prophets in the Old Testament say that the Messiah will suffer for the forgiveness of sins. He says, who are you? Who are you? I'll tell you who we are. We are the church founded on the apostles. Amen. The apostles who walked with the Jesus. The apostles who knew Jesus. The apostles who inspired the writings of the New Testament by the grace and gift of the Holy Spirit. And we are their inheritors. They were Jews. Jews arguing with Jews means that we just pick a side and we agree with the Jews who were the apostles. By contrast, 
Who's Mohammed? He's some 600 years too late, 1,000 plus miles away too far, guy who didn't know a thing about Jesus and tried to claim something that's untrue that Jesus was not crucified.